Populism is when the population decides that the ruling class needs to be challenged across the board because it's corrupt. Populism is the great awakening that we are praying for. We're not just praying for uh, conservatives in the Republican Party. My gosh, half the conservatives in the Republican Party are what we call rhinos. They're half our problem. What we want is the population to awaken. We want Joe Rogan to continue to go down the rabbit hole he's going down. We want Bill Maher to continue to lament the fact that uh, the liberals that he used to represent uh, no longer are speaking. It's the crazies to the left of him. We want populism because populism is when the nation is no longer divided by parties, but coming to consensus that the ruling class is corrupt and must be overturned. So what does it tell you? It tells you two things. One is Tucker's unhinged. This probably would not have been a Fox News uh, special, but he can say whatever he wants to say now that Fox has ditched him. And so he's coming out with this because Obama, uh, Michelle Obama, and their influence in the Democratic Party has continued to increase with the rumors of the possibility of an impeachment of Joe Biden and of the idea that Michelle Obama may be a surprise candidate on the ticket. So this is just the way that world works. So now Tucker said, well, I think I'm just going to preemptively tell a story that nobody's talking about and use the platform I've got so that America can get the facts. But it explains to you why same-sex marriage was advanced as one of Barack Obama's most important personal commitments to the LGBT community when he was elected. He said, be patient. I'm on your side. And uh, he succeeded in doing that. And now you know the inside story. Biden alerts special counsel David Weiss telling a federal judge he plans to seek a grand jury indictment of the president's son on a felony gun charge before the end of the month. Andy McCarthy is a former U.S. A former assistant U.S. attorney, excuse me. He is a Fox News contributor, and it is great to have you here. How you here. doing, Andy? Um, okay, I'm can you say that... It, th th some of this is just hard to keep up with and hard to follow. So what's your best explanation to viewers at home as to what's happening right now? And will Hunter Biden actually be indicted? I, I still wonder myself, Dana, because first of all, people should understand Weiss made that announcement yesterday, not because he wanted to, but because the judge held his feet to the fire. Um, she said that she wanted he, he could have just silently uh, let this case evaporate like he's been doing. And when October rolled around, the statute of limitations would run and the gun count would be gone. Uh, the judge said that she wanted an update on the case on September 6th. So she made him uh, make a disclosure. He wasn't prepared to go in there and say he was going to fold. So he said he was planning to indict. But what do you need to plan? This is like the easiest, most straightforward federal case of all time. It's been well known for five years. It would take about 10 or 15 minutes to present it to the grand jury. It's about a one paragraph indictment if you uh, if you wrote it on the charge that we know about on the gun. Um, there was no reason for him, if he really wanted to indict the case, to go in and give a status report to the judge. He should just go to the grand jury and indict the case. All right, Lance, you see that. I mean, let's be let's be honest here. Uh, my opinion here is, and I thought there's some, I've heard this out there a little bit. If it was not for the judge setting a date of September 6th to come back and talk about whether you bring even an indictment or not, this would have gone the way of the trash can. The statute of limitations would have run out on this uh, gun charge, and it would have all just faded off into nothingness, much like the Hunter Biden laptop did back in 2020. What do you think? You think there's something going to happen out of this, Lance? Well, you know, Comer's, it's a larger problem than that, Gene, and it, there's a bigger story here. So Comer's going to go after Mayorkas. So they got to have, they got to put a scalp on the wall because they're dancing around this Hunter Biden uh, impeachment situation, the corruption of Biden with his fake emails, with the money going to his son, to, uh, to, to that, that story is really the one that should, be, should have all the heat. The Republican Party has a problem. It's not that this isn't important, that the DOJ uh, has been interfering with, the, with this investigation. Well, we already know that. We know that when the case went to Delaware, there was a deal being worked out between the prosecutor and the, the defense, which was intercepted by one righteous judge that said, hey, this is weird. You guys can't do that. Uh, the, you could go right now. Newt Gingrich broke a story today. I heard it uh, this afternoon. 
where his information says that the Department of Justice literally got a hold of the uh, DA in Atlanta and said, you've got to push the prosecution on Trump. We're, we're behind you. You've got a situation where the corruption and the, and the, uh, the, the institution of justice and the intelligence community is working with Democrats in order to lock up their political opposition while, while our party is kind of dribbling the ball on these things, this is not the story that we, re we should really be focusing on. And nevertheless, it's once again evidence that the Department of Justice, with Merrick Garland, is interfering. If this goes to Merrick Garland to pull him out of office, then it's worth it. If it's Mayorkas, then it's not. All right, let me show you this about what's happening with Mayorkas. Watch so some breaking news to tell you about here. Foxnews.com has just discovered that the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, James Comer, has subpoenaed the DHS secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas, and several other DHS and Secret Service officials wanting testimony related to the Secret Service's alleged tip-off of the Biden transition team regarding a planned ta Hunter Biden tax probe uh, interview back in 2020, uh, also accusing the agencies of obstruction of the congressional investigation. Six subpoenas in total were sent out, one directed to Mayorkas for documents and five for depositions, two to Secret Service officials and three to DHS officials. Uh, Comer told Fox News Digital, quote, the Department of Justice initiated the Biden family cover-up and now DHS under the leadership of Secretary Mayorkas is complicit in it. He went on to say investigators were never able to interview Hunter Biden during the criminal investigation because Secret Service headquarters and the Biden transition team were tipped off about the planned interview. We'll keep following this. We'll have the latest for you. Meantime. Okay, let me go to you, uh, Rob. You, you see, they were tipped off. You know, let me read a little bit of the, the letter uh, from the Congress to uh, Mayorkas. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a one line in here I want you to see or let me read it since it's so far away from you. In particular, the Oversight Committee has learned the DHS Office of Legislative Affairs instructed the Secret Service to withhold a response the Secret Service had prepared for the committees. I, I mean, it's kind of blunt. It's kind of plain to me. What do you think, Rob? Yeah, they're, they're getting to a place where they're cannibalizing themselves. Uh, somebody's going to have to take a hit um, and and they're they're doing their best to cover up everything that that Biden's involved in and yet in the cover up there's going to be somebody left when you're playing musical chairs you're not going to get a chair so Mayorkas is the next one to be tagged and that that that's that's this idea of of duplicity and and they're just not being transparent but Ultimately, they're going to cannibalize themselves because somebody's going to have to take a hit uh, when they're, they're they're covering this up. You just can't play whack-a-mole any longer. They're popping up everywhere. It's true. Let me read this. Let me, it goes on to say the uh, DHS decision to instruct the Secret Service not to provide this response appears to constitute obstruction of a congressional investigation and the attached subpoenas require the immediate in full cooperation of DHS. Tony, what do you think this says about what's going on with the Secret Service? I think there's trouble. This is this is playing out like a movie, like a, like a Netflix special right now. Uh, and we're and we're watching all the pieces fall, and we're we're getting ready for the, what, what I think is sad is we're we're getting ready to you know for the bombshell, and it's going to be just like one of those TV shows. We're going to be left with a cliffhanger. Because the the real person that needs to be indicted or be dealt with somehow always seems to get uh, get off scot free. So, in Jesus' name, that won't be the case. But that's that's kind of how it feels. Well, and the reality is, Joe Biden is at the top of the heap or the bottom of the barrel, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, you know, in looking at this, you know, you have to. I know you guys have thought this. I know you watching at home. You probably sit there and you thought, well, let's see, what if. You know, Joe's having a hard time, if that is even Joe in there, uh, but he's having a hard time, so maybe he steps down. Well, Kamala would be in charge. Well, she would say things like she said this week. Watch. I feel very strongly about um, the importance as a general matter of engaging in 
U.S. policy as it relates to foreign affairs in a way that we pay attention, of course, to the immediate concerns and threats if they exist, but that we also pay attention to 10, 20, 30 years down the line and what we are developing now that will be to the benefit of our country then. Does anybody understand what that woman said? Uh, now, she went for uh, Joe Biden, decided not to go to the summit, the ACN summit, so he sent Kamala Harris. She's there representing the United States. I don't know if that makes anybody else nervous. It makes me very nervous, Lance, when I see Kamala Harris, and then she says things like, I, do you think she just doesn't know what to say, so she puts phrases together, or is she really that yeah. confused? Yeah, you know, and, and the thing that is interesting about Kamala Harris is she didn't do so bad when she was debating Pence because she had her script in front of her. She knew the questions and she had rehearsed the answers. But what you see is a person that has no capacity to cognitively connect an idea and an adverb, a verb, and a noun together coherently in a sentence if she doesn't have a script. And that should concern you. Now, when she didn't have a script, she sided with Jesse Smollett. Remember when he yeah. talked about uh, getting mugged and uh, lynched up there in Chicago? This is MAGA country. And she, I, I don't even know if she ever took the tweet down no, she that didn't. she said, we stand with you, Jesse. And she, she backed him 100%. She's the one who was giggling away on Steve Colbert saying, during the summer of riots, she said, he said, you think this will ever stop? And she laughed and she said, I hope not, like it was a movement that was going to redemptively shape America. Or her saying, well, what we've got to do is we've all got to fund these. We've got to, we've got to get our funds together to support these valiant protesters. And that was the BLM Antifa riots. All of this stuff gets swept away just kind of like the crack pipe guy right. with Obama because the media doesn't have it. We, unfortunately, have got to bring it out to refresh our memory that this is who we're dealing with. Uh, yeah, Rob McCoy, I think that's what we need yeah. in th these decades as other decades in the history of the world. We must step back and understand what life is like then and now. Yeah. I uh, I was watching Facing Nolan about Nolan Ryan, 51 records in Major League Baseball. And he was on the pitching mound and the, the coach comes out and he says, don't even think about replacing me. You know, uh, the, the guys that are warming up are, are terrible. Just keep me out here. And you were talking about how she's representing us. Well, who's in the bullpen? I mean, Biden's not going to be able to put together a sentence. And she sounded inebriated, honestly. I... I <laughs> It, it, it's like don't even let them don't let them speak don't put them in public and and they're they're running out of runway uh, this is this is going to be i have no idea how they're going to get themselves out of this this is this this is so confusing and warped and strange and who's taken over is he is he going to be impeached I, even her she's just terrible and and there's no bullpen they're, they're yeah well you're in california they Okay, I'll just leave that. All right, so uh, uh, Pierce no, please, Morgan. God, no. <laughs> Pierce Morgan compared Joe Biden and Ron DeSantis. This will be interesting. Watch. Well, it is, and I was really struck, actually, by the difference between his response, both uh, in Maui and then uh, again to the hurricane in, in Florida, and that of Ron DeSantis, who's running for president, because he might end up potentially being in the White House. On the one hand, you have a guy who's currently got the job, didn't want to comment originally about Maui, which I found extraordinarily tone deaf. I have no comment to make about one of the worst natural disasters in modern American history. Uh, he didn't want to leave his holiday and go down there when, of course, any normal person with that scale of disaster would have got straight on a plane just for the optics, never mind anything else. Um, and now, now he wants to make it all about himself and this weird fire that went on in his house, which seems to get progressively worse. The only fire known in history that's got steadily worse the year after year after year since it actually was put out. Um, by contrast, DeSantis, I've been really impressed. I think he's just basically said, forget politics, mm -hmm. put all that to one side. He got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and he kept pounding that beat. He was on television all day. Now, part of it might be self-interest. It's obviously good optics for him running for president. But also, it's why he's so popular as a governor and why he's been so successful. He gets stuff done. And he didn't play politics. He welcomed the president calling him. He talked about that. But nowhere did I hear him blame anything. And what's happened down in Florida is really interesting. Three people dead so far. 
way, way fewer people have died than they were anticipating. Maybe because the preparation that went on yep. by Governor DeSantis and his team was exemplary. And there's a lesson for, for Joe Biden. Stop playing the politics. Right. Do your job. All right. Uh, so you see that, and, and I don't normally agree with Pierce Morgan, but I'll go with him on a lot of that. Uh, the reality is what happened in Maui, I, I, ladies and gentlemen, I see the, all the same stuff you do. It's something's just not right, Lance. You see this, what happened in Maui, I, I just, I would like to see some answers because this whole fire, it just, it's bizarre. It, what happened and how many things, it's horrible. And then of course the ensuing land grabs that seem to be happening. Uh, you know, it's something that should have been, but he's right in the fact Joe Biden and any other president in history would have been on a plane to have been there to uh, bring comfort. That's what a president should do, Lance. Uh, Lance, I'll let you comment before, but I cut you off before the break. You couldn't talk. Any more comments before we change topics? No, I think Tony Suarez brought up a really important point, and, and, and I want to address it. And that is, uh, it would be great if... Uh, It'd be depressing, but it would still be great if it was Biden and Trump in a rematch. And we now have a lot of technology that is restricting voter fraud. And we have Trump who uh, really needs, uh, in a sense, to, to have his opportunity to govern America after what happened in 2020. My concern, as I'm thinking about it, is what if it isn't Biden and at the last minute, they ingeniously have him, for health reasons, step aside. And then they put the glow and the aura on Kamala with VP Gavin Newsom. You see, what America needs is to know the extent of the corruption and the cover-up. Because once Biden is taken down, the unraveling goes to the entire apparatus of the corrupt DOJ. We have to actually start to see light come in on all of the darkness that has been going on. And uh, I think the only way you get there is to go towards Biden, exposing him, and then exposing Merrick Garland, and then exposing the complicity of, of the intelligence community in the way they've interfered. And I think that's... But I think Tony has a great point. If it was Biden, there would be an advantage. But I'm not so sure they would let that happen. We... We, we, we have a say in all of this at the end of the day. You, you want to go with this, this uh, elite movement of globalism? Well, listen, the little guy isn't going to be beat up anymore. We're going to light you up, meaning we're going to call and we're going to make sure that you vote and you do the right thing on behalf of the American people. Oh, That's man. exciting. That is exciting. All right, Tony Suarez, you got a minute to wrap up? Yes, sir. Well, like, like I said at the Southwest Believers Convention, here's bad news and good news. Bad news, revival's not coming. But here's the great news. Revival is here. America is in revival. We're angry. We're boycotting. We're doing everything we're supposed to do. But here's the secret weapon, Flashpoint Army. Every believer listening, here's our secret weapon. Let's go win souls. Let's build the army of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone we reach with the gospel, we bring them into the kingdom. We disciple them. They'll vote their convictions. That's the answer to what's plaguing this nation. It's revival. Let's win souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Something coming up. Uh, next week, September 14th, we're going to be in Omaha, Nebraska. You want to be a part right there at the Mid-America Center and actually across the bridge over in Council Bluffs. We'll be there for a special one night, one night only Flashpoint Live. Let me tell you who's going to be there. Dutch Sheets, Mike Lindell, Hank Kuhneman, Jesse Duplantis, Rick Green, Tony Suarez and Flash Talk start off the evening with Dutch Sheets and Rick Green. Going to be a great, great evening. Uh, you can find out more. Go to GoVictory.com slash FP Live. We go home, change clothes, change bags, and then head to Atlanta. Why? Because starting Sunday, September 17th, we are going to be in a different city, five cities in five nights. And we're starting in Atlanta, Georgia. We're going to be for the Victory Road Tour, Victory Channel Road Tour at Flashpoint's going to be a part of that. Uh, you go to the first city is Atlanta, Georgia. 
Uh, we'll be at Faith Christian Center. Then we go to Huntsville, Alabama on Monday, McGee, Mississippi, Tuesday, Monroe, Louisiana, Wednesday, Houston, Texas on Thursday. Lots of people that you know are going to join us. Uh, I, I, too much information to talk about, but go to there, right? GoVictory.com slash road tour. Think of this as Flashpoint and Victory Channel Unplugged. Uh, we're going to have a good time and we're, as well as connect back here to Fort Worth for Victory Thon and what has happening uh, with the Victory Channel. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there. You go sign up. It's free. Lots of giveaways. A lot of people that you want to meet. You want to meet us there.